Hello and welcome back. Uh, I'm Andrew Coleman and I'll be your host and facilitator today. Uh, we have Robert Heath with us again. Welcome back and he'll be introducing himself in just a minute here. This is the Flow Certified Coach uh, training series online for 2020. This is video 14 and this is tile 12. So we're still in right people. But now uh, after the 4R model, we're going to look at roles and we're going to look at the roles through, as always, the uh, four lenses here. So we're going to head to the next slide and I'm going to turn it over to Robert and have him introduce himself. Awesome. Thank you again, Andrew, for having me. And I'm really excited to talk to you all about the roles because, as you know, um, I'm a flow certified coach, but I'm also a leadership development consultant and executive coach. And one of the things that I focus on is people. Um, if you saw what we talked about in, 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 in the first tile, you'll know that one of the biggest things that you have to realize is that every one of the four lenses people are involved from the individual to the organizational to the team or to the um, product and the project and the, the systems. And that's what I really focus on. And this talking about right people and right roles is really exciting because you get to see how you can make sure that everybody in the organization is actually working and rowing in the same direction. And that's where you get that exponential growth when we talk about flow. Exactly. All right. So a couple of things that we want you all to take away from this is that we are following and going, you know, in, in, in line with the Agile Coaching Institute's view. Um, there's just a bit of a modification. One of the things that you're going to see as we talk about the Agile Coach is that the Agile Coach is going to be more than a scrum master. And we'll go a little bit more in depth about kind of that, that, that messy middle is what I like to call it between, you know, enterprise coach and the enterprise flow coach and then when you get down to the scrum master and what's going on in there with the product owners um, and, and things of that nature but we're also going to introduce to you the concept of the enterprise flow coach which is more than just an enterprise agile coach more than a program manager more than a portfolio director it actually encompasses a number of the roles and is able to coach and 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 really develop the mindsets, not just the skill sets and the tool sets, but the mindsets of people throughout the organization from the organization level all the way down to the individual. Um, now, one of the things that we want to talk about specifically with flow, a lot of people think that flow is something different and we want to just kind of reemphasize that flow is not something that is different. It is something that works with everything. It is kind of a lens that or an umbrella that uh, that covers over agile, that covers over scrum, Kanban, lean, all of the different modalities and methodologies that you can think of for improving productivity, for improving throughput. These all work well with flow. And the reason that they work well with flow is because flow focuses on how to make sure that people are working better together as a unit, as an organization, not just focusing on what tools are the people using, right? And flow recognizes, of course, the key scrum roles when we're talking about agile of the product owner, the scrum master, and the team members or the developers. All right. And so one of the things that we want to look at is what are the flow roles and as we go through the parts of the organization. So we're going to start at the individual. And the first thing that you see is that the individual is generally focused on, right, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. When you look at the writings that, that Ted and Andrew have put together, you know, they pull a lot from Daniel Pink. And a lot of the information that he talks about of the individual is that the individual is driven by, right, the passion from the individual comes from their desire for autonomy, their desire for mastery, and their desire to fulfill a purpose. This goes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right, and, and getting to self-actualization. That's what we really want to focus on. And those are the ways that you can really get the best out of people at the individual level. Now, when we get down to the team level, we're talking about how do you create good teams? There's a lot of good literature out there. You can look at Patrick Lencioni and a number of different people that talk about how you get to teams that can actually do the work they need to do. Some of the, t the frameworks that we use are the Scrum Master and the Agile team and facilitating that process, Facil using the tools of Scrum and using the tools of Agile to help a team be its best. And that's the same thing as we move on to the product owner and the product portfolio management, what we really look at is the agile coaching. And this is a place where, you know, this is where I like to call it the messy middle. This is the connector between the organization and the organizational goals and strategies, and then the individuals, the, the individual and the team who are going to make those things happen. And this is where enterprise flow coaching is so important because the enterprise flow coach can definitely work with the 
organization and the product owner to really make sure that we are in alignment, that the vision is clear, that it's cascading properly, and that it's getting down right to the left side of the quadrants when we look at the individual and the team. Oftentimes, there's two different languages that are spoken, and this is the key. When you get into enterprise flow coaching, this is where you really are focusing on the language of leadership, whereas on the left side, you're talking a lot about the language of management. And what winds up happening is we forget that we lead people but we manage things. And so on the left side where it's very people focused, that side generally doesn't speak the language of leadership very well. And so it's important that for the enterprise flow coach, the agile coach, and even the scrum master who deal with the people to be able to help to teach and to translate the language of management into the language of leadership and vice versa. And that's really what our roles are um, when we're looking at the four lenses. That's one of the big focuses that we have in flow is making sure that everybody is on the same page, that the vision is making its way all the way down to the lowest common denominator so that everybody can be rowing full speed in the same direction. And that's a really good metaphor. And I think when they're doing the rowing, uh, that they call it a state of swing. Mm -hmm. and, and that just describes it so well that you just get into that flow and it's just effortless. So you mm -hmm. can just almost feel the boat gliding through the water. I love that. Exactly. Really good. All right. And so this is the whole idea. And this is what we're talking about, aligning through all four roles, right? Making sure that you're in alignment because the, the, the biggest thing is that if in a boat, if you've got, you know, everybody rowing and one oar is hitting it one time and one oar is hitting it another time, what that does is that makes the boat tack just a little bit and it creates drag and it slows the boat down. And this is what happens in organizations, right? And one of the things that I want you to all to look at is you'll see the different color codings of the roles that are here, right? Now, in the green, which is the smaller circle in the middle, you'll see that the roles of the scrum, the key scrum roles that are normal in an organization touch every part of the organization. They touch the individual, the team, the product, and the organizational boxes. And the reason why that's important is because remember, leadership is about people. And at the end of the day, the scrum roles are set up to maximize the people. And so when you look at the scrum roles, we see that we have in the product section, we have the product owner, right? And then over in our team section and in our individual section, we also have the developers or the individuals. And that's where the work's getting done at the smallest level, right? But you also have the team level facilitator who is a scrum master who works at, with the team level. Now, this is the part that touches everything. And in the organizational piece, the enterprise flow coach has to help the vision casters, right? And, and, and that's, that's one of the things that we don't have um, on here, but it's, it's just something to understand that the organization is responsible for the vision that those three boxes are making manifest. The organization is responsible for putting forth the strategy and putting forth the, the why, right? Simon Sinek says it that way. Start with why. The organization is responsible for that part because that is where the how and the what then come from. And so that's what our green circle is. Now, if you look at your the, the yellow semicircle, what you'll begin to see is that that touches the, the, the organization and it touches the individual just a little bit, but it's mainly focused in that product and a little bit in the team, but it's mainly focused on the right side of the quadrant, right? And one of the main reasons is because the agile coach's job is to really work between the senior ex management and the portfolio manager and the program manager to really figure out what the product is. And you see on the side there, product includes the programs, the processes, right? That's where the, the product owner and the agile coach work together to really translate that vision into an actionable um, working uh, a paradigm for the people on the left side and the individual and the team levels, right? And this also includes the roles, right? Program manager, you got your line manager, you got your business um, owner. All of those roles are included in that 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 org that 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 part of the, the the process that the agile coach generally would be focusing on and kind of really clearing out and translating the the language of leadership and language of management. Remember that is that place where the two generally come into um, into contact, and that's where a great translator is necessary, and that's a very important skill for an agile coach to have. And that is why when we get up to the organization, when you see the the blue segment, right. That really focuses, again, on that organization and product owner because the enterprise flow coach is not only helping the agile coach to do that translation, but it's, uh, the enterprise flow coach is also responsible for, tr for really helping to develop the vision, helping to get the, the people at the top to understand prioritization, to understand how their decisions at the top cascade throughout the organization, to understand the actual impacts on the people that 
the things, the, the decisions that they are making and the things that they're thinking about and the discussions that they're having have on the organization. And that's something that's so powerful and so important because I, I'll tell you just a, a story from my own personal life as a, as a, as a, as a lean leadership um, consultant. There are a lot of companies that we've gone into and this, this applies to Scrum, Agile, Kanban, Lean, all of the different methodologies. One of the things that you'll see and, and, and you'll, you've probably had this experience as well if you've been um, working in this field for, for, for just a little bit of time, you go into an organization and they want a particular result. They want something to happen. And we'll go in and, and I, I've had this experience so many times where I go in and we provide a, a Kaizen and we're working with, you know, the, the, the product owner or in, 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 in lean parlance, we're working with the, 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 the charter sponsor and we go through and we've got the team and we do the Kaizen and we get the reductions and we've saved 300,000, 400,000, a million dollars. And then of course, at the end of each org, at the end of each, um, push in what we call an agile each sprint you have a list of things that need to be done in order in the organization to change processes systems or whatever the case may be to cement the growth to cement the the, the learning and the, the the earnings that we've got from that and what will happen so often is that something that was a priority two weeks ago or a month ago and therefore which is the reason why the charter got accepted when we get finished and we've made these gains right we've we saved i've been in a situation where we saved a company a million dollars and there were five things that were necessary to be done in order to make sure that those gains happened and two weeks later without any consideration of the million dollars that they were not going to save if they didn't do these things, they went in a different direction. And that was a failure of communication because the, the product owner or the charter sponsor was not involved in the conversations that were happening at the organizational level. And so they wound up losing that savings. Now, this is after we, were, we had left and there was nothing that we could do about it. But those are the types of things that happen when you don't have a good connection and a good alignment between your organizational components, your C-suite, your, your senior executives and your management and your portfolio managers, and then down to the product area, right? There's, there's times where you see finance and operations don't talk to each other, even though finance is determining whether or not the gains of operations are actually there. Just these types of things that happen in organizations. This is what the Enterprise Flow Coach is extremely proficient at weeding out and smoothing out and, and pointing out for the, for the organization. And that's where they can be the best resource for the agile coach who is dealing a lot more with the product owner and then trying to try, trying to make that balance happen and so this is the reason why flow is so important and understanding again there are people in every box and as an enterprise flow coach as in the flow system your goal is to help those people to be aligned to be working together so that you can get exponential results yeah. That's an excellent example. Thanks, Robert. I was sort of <laughs> chuckling to myself because I'm like, yep. Uh, I've, I've seen it over and over again, where especially when we look up in the enterprise flow level, up in the organization box, mm -hmm. I, I look at that and I just think, oh, wow. You know, especially like when you give an example where they're headed towards the savings and then they go another direction. Mm -hmm. Everybody's mm -hmm. like doing the scream. <laughs> and, exactly, and I look at that, and I just it, it just reminded me about the the necessity for everyone also to get trained in all yes. four boxes. Yes, and it's, yeah, and the other thing that just popped into my head was also the time it takes to grow people into those roles. Exactly, exactly. And, and the detriment that comes when you don't understand these roles. Because one of the things that, and you know, you've seen this before as well, when they yeah. make those decisions to not go in this direction, what does it say to all of the people who did all of that work? What does it say to all of the people who were excited about the direction that we were going in when you just abruptly turn and go somewhere else? And the issue is that all of that vitriol, all of that anger, all of that resentment generally doesn't make it up oh, to the organizational level oh, it, it's, it's stuck here. right here yeah. in the team I'm level and maybe yeah. at the product owner but generally on the left side and so you get all of this angst and you see companies that have tremendous turnover right and one of the things that we talk about so much is how much of a killer turnover is yeah. for the average company and the society of human resource management put this put this number out just recently for the average company where you have a worker that is making less than fifty thousand dollars a year to replace them costs a fifth of their salary Wow. 
And that's that is just something, right? That that's is just, real money. That, yeah, that's real money. And that's just the replacing. That's not retraining. That's not the lost productivity. That's not any of the other externalized costs. That's just the search and the replacement of that person. Yeah. And so from a transformation perspective, for me, this is just so vital and critical for the leadership to not just understand these roles as like a tool set, but the mindset yes. and, and, and give full support to the journey. Exactly. And if they're not, if they're going to invest all this money, invest in the journey. <laughs> yes. And invest in the journey because the return on investment for the journey is so much more. It's exponentially yeah. more than just the growth and the mindset. And one of the things I tell, I, I work with a lot of small business owners as well. And one of the things yeah. that I talk to them about is, you know, a lot of them struggle with delegation. They struggle with getting other people to do the roles. And the key <laughs> thing about it is if you can get somebody, if you can get a team of five people that are only 20% as good as you are, you have another you. Yeah. And if you get them to only improve by 20%, they're still only 40% as good as you are. Yeah. You got two more yous. Yeah. And as you continue to do that, eventually they'll get to be as good as you, but here's the beauty yeah. of it. They'll also get to be better than you. Yeah. And that's exactly. Exactly. And that's the journey. That's the exponential <laughs> that's growth. Beautiful. That's where you don't get to see it. That's where the companies that have engaged employees that have inclusive areas and, and inclusive, um, cultures yeah. that's where they get 140 150 percent earnings above their the, the industry standard yep so yeah that, exactly i love it yeah <laughs> so i don't know if you all can tell recap. that i'm a little bit excited about this part of uh this part of what flow does well, it's I so love vital the people yes yes and, and, and yeah go ahead yeah, and, and ultimately, I guess the big thing for me is I just want you all to understand, like Andrew was saying, it's so important that you train everyone to understand because it's a mindset shift. It's yeah. a paradigm shift. You have to create the culture for the tools to actually be useful. And so that's one of the things that we want to really focus on. And so as we recap, remember that Flow follows Agile Coaching Institute's view. It's just a simple modification that, right, the agile coach is more than a scrum master. There's a little bit more that's involved in that. And, sim and similarly, the enterprise flow coach is more than just an enterprise agile coach, is more than just a program manager, a portfolio director. Really, the agile coach and the agile flow or the enterprise flow coach work together mm -hmm. to smooth out the, transfer the translation of the language of leadership and the language of management when dealing with people, right? And we recognize the different positions, the product owner, the scrum master, and the team yeah. members. So you wanna, you don't have to do anything different. You can use these very people and make the change that you need to make, make the transformation that you need to make. And so most organizations are not able to distinguish between a scrum master and an agile coach. And it's something that's really important to understand. The agile coach facilitates the work of the scrum master in a similar way that the enterprise flow coach facilitates the work of the agile coach. And that's why, that's there right and the, the the big thing that as you as you look at it the key with flow is understanding the alignment right the swing as andrew yeah. was saying with, with 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 the boats right the alignment of all of the different components of the four lenses and when you can do that watch out beautiful really well done thank you robert as always uh this was an excellent teach back i really appreciate it and uh, we'll see everybody in the next video. Thank you. Have a you. great one. Have a good one. Thanks. Sharing.